That's a lot lighter. Good morning and welcome to the Voodoo Garden. This is tobacco. Well, it's going to be compost in a little bit because I don't use tobacco for anything. I had to trim off the lower leaves on the tobacco plant. Hey, that's tobacco. Yeah. Because uh, the plant was getting really overloaded with things and I just kind of neglected it. And uh, by the way, this is Rascal. Rascal, come here. Make an appearance. Yeah. Poor Rascal didn't get much air time in the last episode on the Praxis channel, so squirmy little thing. He came down here with me. He's feeling a little bit, uh, I don't know, kind of left out because uh, when I go in to hang out with the goats on the other channel, he thinks that I like them and I don't like him and he's a jealous little booger, so you know how that goes when you have an animal that is really needy. But I'm, tri I'm, uh, I'm giving him extra special attention. Don't worry about that. But I'm trimming off this uh, tobacco plant because it's flowering. Yes, and I showed you on a previous episode that it is flowering and uh, the flowers are beautiful. They have these, these long pinkish white trumpet flowers that are just beautiful. Now, if you're growing this outside, it attracts pollinating insects and that's good for your garden. I, grow, I grew one of these in my garden uh, when I lived up in Minnesota. It was perfect. All kinds of pollinators were coming into the garden. The cool thing is, is that all kinds of aphids were trying to crawl onto it and they were getting stuck and it looked like the killing fields. It was just disgusting. Nobody wanted to go near that, that plant. But I wanted to give you a tip in case you decide to grow tobacco indoors or outdoors. As soon as it's done with the flowers, you're going to get these things up here and these are called seed pods. When a tobacco plant decides to put out flowers, it does not mess around. It puts out a huge cluster of flowers all at once and uh, you, you got to pollinate them. And uh, I think I mentioned how I pollinate those. I, I stick my finger in there and I move it around or I take the flower and just kind of squish it here and there gently. That pollinates the flower. It's not rocket science because insects get in there and they just buzz around like these little crack addicts. And uh, they buzz around, they shake the pollen around and the flower gets pollinated. Wonderful stuff. But once the flower is pollinated, it'll slowly die and then fall off the plant and uh, it'll leave this greenish looking pod behind. That's where all the seeds are. Now I want to warn you, this is the warning I'm going to give you. Tobacco seeds are so small, they're smaller than ground pepper. They're just so teeny tiny. When I when I've sent out seeds to friends, they said, "Are those really seeds? It looks like dust." Yes, they're seeds. So each one of these pods will hold literally hundreds if not thousands of seeds. It's incredible. So you can imagine the amount of seeds going on in here. Now, once the flower falls off, you have a green pod. That pod will ripen and form the seeds inside and then eventually it'll turn a yellowish tan color. Now, once it turns this yellowish tan color, you can take the pod off and let it ripen off the plant. And you might be asking yourself, Ray, why would I let that happen? Why not just let it ripen on the plant? Well, let me tell you, I've tried that and I'm telling you from experience, what'll happen is one day, Without warning, these things will pop open and the seeds will go everywhere. And you're going to have tobacco seeds all over your house. And yeah, they will travel too. So what I recommend is that when your pods are looking like this, now you'll know that the pod is ripe and ready to pull off the plant when the stem turns brown, okay? That's when it's totally ready. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this, snip it off right here, and I'm going to take the, the whole stem with all of the pods on it and I'm going to go set it on a paper plate and that way if they open they're going to fall on the paper plate and that's a white plate and I can actually see the seeds and also when they're all done I'll open them up myself get them out onto the white paper plate and then put them in a baggie and set them aside until I'm ready to give out seeds so there's one here's another now, all you do is just snip them off don't worry about taking off a couple leaves with them that's perfectly okay this one's not quite ready. Now, uh, there's two reasons why I want to do this. I want to take the, these off so they can ripen and not open up all over the place. That's one of the reasons. The second reason is once you, your plant puts out, well, once your tobacco plant puts out the flowers in the pods, it really does not grow that much. Right over here, whoops, I just broke a leaf. Well, that was really smart. Snip compost. What'll happen is when your uh, seed pods or up here, the growth that was right here slows down. Yeah, it slows down because it's putting all its energy into putting out these flowers. Once you get these flowers off, all of this side growth, see these little shoots over here? 
on tomato plants, they're called suckers. It has them going all the way down the plant. Once you get those uh, seed pods off, the suckers start growing, and this plant is going to get huge really, really fast. So that's the second reason I want to get these pods off of here. Done. Well, that wraps it up for the tobacco plant. Let me set those over here. Remind me, don't throw those out into the compost. There's one other plant I want to, actually, there's two other plants I want to show you. This is not going to be a long episode. It's not going to be one of those hour long, oh God, when is it going to end type of episodes. And I want to show you three things in the voodoo garden today. The second one is this. <laughs> I like this. My mom came to visit just a few days ago, and uh, she come over from uh, Nebraska. And this is the first time she's seen this house, and she loved it. She had a great visit. We, uh, I took her all over the yard, and I showed her the trees and, and, the, and the, the, the property and everything. And she's seen it on my programs, but she's never seen it in, in real life. She doesn't get around that much. So uh, she came to visit with my cousin, and uh, I took him for a tour. They loved it. I brought them downstairs and this was definitely something to behold. I, I was showing her all these plants and uh, she hadn't seen a lot of these plants. A, a lot of people have not seen some of these plants in real life because you just don't see them every day. You know, you don't see cotton growing every day. And uh, so I, I pointed this one out. I said, do you know what this one is? She goes, no. I said, it's cotton. Do you know what these little things on it are? She goes, nope. I said, those are cotton balls. Yeah. Those uh, actual cotton balls. Remember, I was showing how this was putting out flowers. Well, I pollinated the flowers with my, my little bee finger over here, and uh, look at what it formed. I gotta say, cotton is definitely a fun plant to grow. I mentioned this before, I wanna do it again. It is a fun plant to grow. It grows fast, it produces a fun flower that is beautiful to see, it grows the cotton ball really fast. Now, by the way, first thing it'll do is it'll put out these weird little uh, they look like claws. There'll be three claws all closed up together and then a flower is going to come out of them. You pollinate that flower and this one isn't pollinated but if you pollinate it the flower will shrivel up and die and there will be a little green ball inside of there. A little tiny one. And it's about the size of a skittle. A little piece of candy. Yep. There'll be a little green ball in there. Then as time goes and let me tell you something it does not take much time at all. Let me bring this up. This is what happens. It starts growing outside of this. It starts bursting out. Yep, we have a green ball here. Now that green ball is heavy. It, it feels like a little watermelon. Yeah, I got, I think, two or three of them on here. Yep, and what'll happen is those things will grow, they'll mature, and then one day, oh, here's the large one over here. Yep, see, it's got little seams on it, and one day, out of the blue, it'll just go pop, like popcorn. It opens up, and then you got cotton in there, with all the seeds inside. Now this one is supposed to be a variety where the cotton is green. Yes, not dyed cotton. You know, normally cotton is white. Then you have to dye it. This is supposed to have green cotton. So we're gonna find out if that's true. I wanted to show you this because I wanna show you all the stages of it. I showed you when it was growing really small, when it flowered. Now we have the cotton balls on it. Let's see what happens in the next episode when this thing busts open. It's amazing how much fun you can get out of one seed, isn't it? They're so cheap, yet they give you so much enjoyment. It's just fantastic. Okay, anyway, one last thing I wanna show you is this thing back here. This is called a passion fruit. A passion fruit uh, plant is generally a vine. I don't know if it comes in a tree form or not, but all I know is I have the passion fruit vine. Now what happens is you plant the seed, you wait, you wait, you wait, it sprouts, it takes its time, and then all of a sudden, it goes nuts and it starts grabbing onto everything and it starts growing all over the place. It's just a real nut. Now what I did with this thing is I, I had it in the voodoo garden and it was growing so fast I had all my vegetable plants growing in here so I really didn't have room for it to grow. So I did the only thing that Ray could do is I cut its little head off and uh, I thought well okay wait. Wait your turn. I trimmed it back. I thought that'd give me a little bit of time. Well what happened was is uh, it doesn't like to play by Ray's rules. It decided it's gonna make five new plants instead of just wait. So look, look what happened when I pruned this thing. I just recently transplanted this into a 16 inch pot because I just know I'm gonna need the room. And the lower leaves, see those lower leaves? Yep, that's a magnesium deficiency. This plant had a magnesium deficiency and so I gave it some Epsom salt and then as it grew, you can see, well by the way, when you uh, give it Epsom salt for a magnesium deficiency, the affected leaves will never heal. They'll always look like that. You'll see the improvement in the newer leaves. And take a look at this. As it goes up, these are the newer leaves. And they are a beautiful shade of green. Also, another thing. See how they're single-lobed leaves? They look like just regular leaves over here. 
Well, as they mature, the plant matures, look at what the leaves do. They turn into three lobed leaves. Yeah, it looks like a totally different plant, doesn't it? Well, I also wanted to show you, I trimmed it right back here when it was short. Right there, you can see the cut spot way back there. And all of these new vines, I think it's like one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, I thought it was five. Nope. We have six vines coming out. Doesn't it look like a living menorah? You know, those things that uh, Jewish people put candles on for the holidays? Yeah, it looks like a living menorah. It's just putting all these weird vines. And let me tell you something, it's growing onto everything. I have this decoration that I received from a friend from the Philippines. And by the way, on the walls, I have all of these gifts that friends have sent me, and it's just beautiful. But uh, I think this thing is gonna take all of these gifts and start ripping them to shreds, because look, it's grabbing onto my thermometer, it's grabbing onto this old metal ring thing that I found out in the soil, it's grabbing onto this decoration over here, and right over to the left, it decided it wants to strangle my bird of paradise. Be warned, folks, if you're gonna be growing a passion fruit, you better have room for it, because it's not gonna take no for an answer. It's going to go nuts. And what I assume this thing is going to do, and what I'm going to encourage it to do, I'm going to encourage all six of those vines, and they will grow more vines from those vines. It's, it's going to get nuts. I'm going to encourage that to grow up the wall and grab onto everything there. So if everything works out right, this is going to be a wall of passion fruit vine. And wouldn't that be neat if it fruited there, too? I'd have passion fruit vines and little fruits hanging off of there. Well, we'll see what's going to happen. That is turning out to be quite the entertaining little plant. Yeah, I did have a passion fruit uh, vine growing once before in the other voodoo garden when I lived up in Minnesota, but I got this infestation of white flies. And let me tell you something, white flies love the taste of passion fruit. So um, I had to get rid of the plant. It was just way too infested. And I, I, every time I sprayed it, it would get a little bit sickly because you know every time you spray a plant, it affects the plant. And I had to spray it so often, it just wasn't worth it, so I put it out of its misery, so I got rid of it. But this time, I don't have the white fly, the white fly problem that I had before. So hopefully, hopefully, keep my fingers crossed, I'm going to have a big, healthy plant growing over there as a nice little backdrop to the voodoo garden. Yep, everything's changing. Everything's looking good. All the vegetables are out of here, and all the tropicals are coming through nice and healthy. I have a new addition here that I don't need to show you because it's just this little thing in a cup. Uh, things arrive in the mail all the time, and I never expect most of these things because people don't tell me they're going to send me something. Well, I received these little tiny balls in an envelope and I didn't know what they were until I read the letter. It turns out they're called pregnant onion. And if you've never seen a pregnant onion, I don't have a picture of one, but go to Google and type pregnant onion. And what it is, is it looks like an onion growing on the ground with all these leaves coming out. But if you look really close, as this onion grows, little babies come out of the body of the onion. And it's uh, actually almost creepy in a way, the way that they do that. There's a frog that does that. It has babies that crawl out of its back. I saw it on uh, a nature channel. But anyway, that's how this reminds me, this onion. I thought, ooh. And I don't know if it's a real onion or not. All I know is what I saw on the internet. And these little balls form inside the onion and push their way out and then fall off the onion and they grow. Yeah, so I got these in the mail and I planted them and they're growing roots right now. So. Keep my fingers crossed on that one too. I hope they grow because that is a fun plant. From what I've read and from what I saw, that is gonna be a fun plant to grow in the Voodoo Garden. So um, yeah, it's a new addition and I'm gonna be showing that in the future. So tune in for future episodes where I'm gonna show new and exotic things here in the Voodoo Garden. If you have any questions or anything, post it in the comments section below. And if you have anything really bizarre or really strange, feel free to send it to me. I'll, I'll see if I can grow. I can't guarantee I grow everything because I just don't have that much room. But I will do my very best. Okay, thank you everybody for joining me in the Voodoo Garden. This is Ray. I'm out of here.